Pull to refresh is one of those really simple components that I know you're going to love. First, we need to have some data that we can play around with. So let's come in here and say q-card, q-card-section, which is going to show our data. And we're just going to hard code some lorem ipsum. So lorem, tab, and there we go. We've got some random text there. And let's copy paste that down a couple of times so it takes up more space. There we go, that's an example of a card. Next, I want to have a chip in here showing the index of the current card that we're showing. I'll show you what I mean. Q-chip, and then we can just throw in there the number one, for example, and maybe we'll give it some color. So let's say color is equal to primary. And there we go. We probably set the text color as well. Text-color is white. And that looks good. So this is going to show us the index of the current item that we're on. And now we're not going to actually create real items. I'll show you a really easy way that we can basically mimic items so that we can just start playing around with this fast. We'll say const items is equal to a reference to an array of items. Let me just throw this down here. And the next thing I'll do is just throw in some blank objects. So rather than entering data here, I'm just going to iterate over this list and just throw out what we've got here. So let's copy paste that down a few times, save it. And now I'll come up here and I've copied those items. We'll come up here and say V-4 is equal to item in items. Now, view makes you use a key when you have a loop. It's very important that view can identify the current item that you're on. Now, since we have blank objects here, we don't actually have anything we can use for the key. So what you can do in that case is pull out the item and the current index inside of this for loop, which means I can now say, that the key is equal to the index because I know that the index is going to be unique. So let's save that and there we go. We've got a whole bunch of items. Next, we'll say that this is going to be equal to the index. So there we go. Notice that we've got zero at the top, but I probably want the last item to be at the top since this is going to be the pull to refresh button. So we're going to pull down and then it's going to refresh and add more items. So rather than having zero at the top, I want the latest item to be at the top. I can easily do that by saying index is equal to, and let's say items.length minus the current index. I think that's right. Yeah, there we go. So now we can see the latest item at the top is seven. Next, I want to add a little bit of space between these cards. Might as well do things properly. So let's select everything from the card component, and then we'll say Control-Shift-P, wrap, and we're going to wrap that inside of a div. And then I just want to add a gutter here so I can separate all of these cards. So class is equal to Q-gutter, and let's set that gutter equal to medium. There we go, how about large? Okay. So this looks good. You can imagine you might have some information, maybe there's a blog post or something like that. And now we're all set to actually use the component. So I'm going to grab all of the div now, Control Shift P, let's wrap that inside of a Q-pull-2-refresh. So this is the pull to refresh component, save it, and by default, it does nothing at all. <laughs> okay, notice that it just spins and it doesn't even stop. So what we can do is I can come in here and say at refresh and decide on what's going to happen when we call this refresh action. So let's say fetch more posts, for example, and then I'll come down here and create that function. So when it refreshes, we're going to call the function fetch more posts, and then we can just add some more items onto this list. So let's say items.value.push, and then we can just throw in a whole bunch of blank items. So there we go, I'll just paste that directly in there, and let's see if it works. Right, notice we got the new items, but this is still spinning. And that's because Quasar's pull to refresh component needs to know when it's done getting all of the items. The reason it needs to know is that allows us to have a whole lot of different promises and then basically say, wait till all of those promises are finished, then I want you to stop showing the spinner. I'll show you what I mean. We actually pull through a done function here, and then when we're done, we simply call that done function, which is going to make the spinner disappear. So let's try this again. And there we go. Notice that it disappears straight away because since we basically just hard coded this in and there's no backend request, no promise, it's going to be done almost instantaneously. 
So let's mimic using a promise here by saying set timeout, and then we'll say 1500, which is 1 1.5 seconds. And then I'll just throw all of this inside of there. So you can imagine this might be a promise where you're fetching data from the back end, then you insert all of that data, and then when all of that's done, you call done. So let's save this and see if it works. One and a half, and boom, it's done. How cool is that? This is so easy to implement using Quasar's pull to refresh. Now let's have a look at some of the other features that we have available to us. We can say no dash mouse, and that means if I try and pull to refresh with my mouse, it won't work. But check this out. If I go Control Shift I, and then I click on this little mobile button here so we can mimic being on a mobile device. And now let's refresh the page so that it picks up that it's on a mobile device. Pull to refresh should still work, and it does. So this is now going to work on mobile devices, but then you might want to implement some other way of doing a refresh when you're on a desktop device. So now if I refresh the page, once again, I can't do it when I'm on a desktop device. So what you might actually do is you might have pull to refresh, and then you might use Quasar's infinite scroll component when you're on a desktop device. So mobile, pull to refresh, because that's kind of how you usually do it on a mobile. But then on a desktop, you could say, when you scroll to the top, then I want you to load more data. So it's just kind of like a little bit of a difference there. And by the way, I should probably point out, this probably isn't the best example of a pull to refresh. Often a pull to refresh means you pull down and then it refreshes the data. It doesn't go and fetch more. It refreshes what you have on the page to make sure everything is up to date. So pull to refresh in this example is just fetching more data, but you can imagine it might refresh some graphs, for example, to make sure they have the latest data for what they're displaying. Just thought that was worth pointing out. Okay, let's see what else we can do. We'll remove no mouse, and I'll show you what it looks like to use pull to refresh inside of a container. So let's grab all of this and say Control Shift P wrap, and I'm going to wrap that inside of a div, and this div is going to have a height. So let's say the height of this div is equal to 300 pixels. All right, there we go. Now notice that's not really working properly, and that's because this div needs to have a scroll area, and we can easily do that by saying class is equal to scroll. And there you go, now we get this scroll bar and it turns it into a scroll area nicely. So this is a Quasar utility class and I use it all the time. It's really handy to just throw something inside of a div, add this scroll class and know that it's going to scroll correctly. But do note that you're probably going to have to set a height in order for it to work right. Okay, so let's see if this works. I can now scroll up and down and when I'm at the top, I can pull to refresh and it works, there we go. Another thing we can do is change the icon. So notice by default, we get this kind of uh, this spinning icon. What we can do is say icon is equal to, and then choose any icon like visibility. Save it, and now we get the visibility icon. And that did not work, so maybe I need to refresh the page here. Ah, no, it's because I'm doing this on the div rather than the pull to refresh. <laughs> I bet you saw that. All right, let's try it again. And there we go. Now we get that visibility icon. Another thing we can do is disable it. So if we come in here and say, disable, save it, then I'm not going to be able to pull to refresh. So maybe for some reason you want to disable it at times. And then if you set this equal to false, so you can imagine you might be modeling something behind the scenes that says whether or not this is enabled or disabled. And there we go, it's now enabled because disable is equal to false. All right, what else can we do? We can also change the color of the icon. So let's say the color is equal to yellow, save it. Now we get that yellow eye and yellow usually looks better against a black background. So let's say background color is equal to black. And there we go, now we get this kind of like a, like a bumblebee theme to our website. So that's pretty much it for the pull to refresh component. Really easy to use, easy to customize. Hope you enjoyed this one and I'll see you in the next video.